Hello, hello, and welcome back to Fred in the Shed. Now, when I put up my radio videos, which people seem to like, one of the comments that I get time and time again is people, you know, watch the videos, and they say to me, well, Fred, you know, I'd love to get back into CB radio, or I'd like to start in sort of CB radio, but I've got no idea, you know, nowadays where to start. I don't know, what, what, how much is it going to cost? What uh, what radio should I buy? Um, how did you get back into it, Fred? You know, what, what radio did you start with? Well, <laughs> it, of course, I didn't have any of this. You know, this is this has been built up over what sort of probably getting on for four years now since I've been back into radio. So, of course, you know, I, I was just like you. I, I, I wanted to, I was interested in the hobby, but I didn't want to spend a great deal of money to find out there was no one there. So you wouldn't believe it. But uh, in fact, one of the first radios that I bought was this pile of rubbish. This, <laughs> this is what I got. I bought this off eBay. This is a GECO radio. Um, basically, it's a radio back from the day, back from the early 1980s. It's a reincarnation of the, uh, I believe it's the Fidelity 1000. And in the day, this was like, oh, the absolute dross of radios. This was one of the worst radios, radio radios you could buy. But I bought this because it was cheap. And I just wanted to find out if anyone was actually around my local area or QTH. And you know what? I paid, I think, £7 delivered for this. Yeah, wow. <laughs> but it worked. You know what? It actually worked. I connected this up to a tank rip antenna up at the uh, up at the side of the house. And do you know what? It actually worked. I, I was able to find um, some stations on the radio. And, I, and just by buying this piece of crap, um, I, I knew that there were stations out there. The, ne the next task was actually trying to get out to them uh, to communicate. And that took me... A while longer now because I'm, I've made quite a few sort of fundamental mistakes which is what I'm hoping to uh, help you guys and girls avoid in this video is I'll, I'll take you through I'll take you through it okay I'll, I'll tell you about sort of mistakes that I made and I'll show you what, what you should do some homework um, around your local area and I'll show you how to do that before you go out and you hit that buy it now button and you start buying radios. And what I'll do on this video, you know, obviously people don't want to spend a lot of money. Um, they don't want to go out and buy a Grant 2 or something straight away. So I'll try and keep the price as low as possible. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll try and see if I can sort what I think some are some reasonable radios um, and the antenna and everything else for less than, say, £100. So, uh, yeah, that's what we can do on this video. If, if you're already into, into video, you know, radio, you'll probably disagree with me. This is my per only per my personal opinion. I don't, you know, I'm not an expert, but it's what I've sort of picked up over sort of three and a half, say, say, say sort of four years. So that's what we're going to be doing on this video. We're going to start, uh, you know, right at, right at the beginning, what radios to buy and where to find out if people are around. So, yeah, please enjoy the video and uh, any comments, uh, you know, good or bad, Put them in the uh, put them below. Put the comments below, and yeah, I'm quite happy to uh, engage in some conversation to that. But right, anyway, let's get on with it. Now, as I was saying, don't make the same mistake that I did and rush out and straight away buy a radio. But instead, switch on your computer, get yourself on the internet, because it helps to find out if there are local people using the radio in your area. Now you achieve this by searching out radio websites such as radio forums and social media such as Facebook and Twitter. Now here in the UK, the best radio forum that I found was the Charlie Tango Forum. And it's a great place to start. The website is absolutely packed with information about all sorts of radios, not only CB but multiband and HF rigs as well. If you're new to radio, you should find it really interesting. It's, it's quite fascinating what's on there. And as you can see, look, you have a section here for standard CB radio. So that's really where you want to head first. And just scroll through some of the threads because I'm sure you've got questions of your own. But quite often, someone else has already come along and uh, you, the answer's just sitting there waiting for you. Now, if you register to use the forum, which is free, you can do more than just browse. You can apply and get yourself a Charlie Tango call sign. Now, don't worry, this is not like a uh, amateur radio call sign. You don't have to take a test or sit an exam. You just have to basically apply for it. Once you get a call sign, well, you can use it when you try and make contacts. And uh, normally, if another Charlie Tango hears you calling, there's more chance that he'll respond. Now, as well as radio forums, another great medium that I've found is Facebook. There's a lot of people that are into radio that now have Facebook groups that you can join and browse very easy to search out so if you haven't already done so get yourself on Facebook and Charlie Tango also has their own Facebook group which is very active and you can get loads of information on there 
Hopefully, you'll find a group around your local area. For me, it's the Hertz Beds and Bucks group. And this is where, where Facebook becomes really, really good because, you know, don't, don't be shy. Just put out a request and, and just ask, you know, is anybody on in my area? And hopefully someone will sort of come back to you and give you an idea what channels and what times that people meet up. And this makes making contacts so much easier. And as you scroll down the uh, Facebook page, you'll, you'll see people advertise their own local nets, which hopefully you might be in range and be able to join into. Now, don't be instantly put off if you find that a lot of these nets use sideband because everybody's got multiband radio. So just pop the guys a question and say, you know, do you go on the UK 40 FM? And if so, what channel? And you'll find that they probably do. There's just so much information out there and don't forget other social media groups as well such as Yahoo groups and things like that. You'll also find that people run their own blogs such as Del Boy's blog here. Now it's just worth checking out because he reviews some of the very latest radios. Del's site is great to visit just to keep up with new technology and the new radios that are coming out. And on top of that Del's working on a UK map where he's recording and shows all of the nets. It's work in progress of course but it's certainly growing and it's very very useful you might just get lucky and see that there is a net very local to you already displayed on Dell's map so uh, check out Dell's website so to sum up there's just so much information out there that you can gather before you even think about picking up a microphone now a lot of people getting back into radio will want to start with something simple such as a mobile setup Yep, and this makes perfect sense, but I do think that people make a mistake at this point because normally they'll go onto eBay and they'll find that there's little radio kits already available, everything for you in one sort of easy package, um, generally sort of priced something like 60 uh, to 100 pounds. And folks think, yeah, I get everything in one place, yeah, fantastic, I'm on the air. But uh, although the radios, to be honest, at this price level, you know, the radios aren't bad they, they certainly would be able to get you on the air but of course everything is at a cost and when you consider that these radios normally sell for say 50 to 60 pounds each anyway as you can see there are certainly cost cuts involved and it normally is the antenna they normally sort of package a pretty cheap and nasty and small mag mount antenna so all this kit arrives through the post and you set it up in your car and you get the little springy antenna and you stick it on your car and it doesn't work. You, you flick through the uh, sort of 40 FM and normally the 40 AM channels, you can't really receive anything. And when you try and transmit, the radio gives you a warning and says hi before it totally cuts out and people get really confused and disillusioned and it all gets chucked in a cupboard somewhere. But it's not really the radio's fault and some of these little cheap micro CBs are actually pretty good and a good place to start. Now I've, I haven't got one myself but the one I would recommend is the CRT-1. The radio is very small and compact but it offers 4 watts output and this is a radio that my friend Jez the Viking uses on his bike and you'd have seen this if you watch any of my videos. Now old Jez, he uses just a three foot fire stick antenna, but you know, at a range of about six miles, it gives me a very solid S7. And also the audio on this radio is particularly good. It's got the same microphone, I think, that I've got in my SS9900, and I've never had a bad report on that microphone at all. And at less than 50 pounds delivered from eBay, I'd say this is a very good choice of starting radio. Now, I'm going to start to use some pictures here from the Thunderpole website. It's a seller that I've used. Yeah, they're perfectly good, but I'm not associated with Thunderpole on commission or anything like that. It's just that their pictures are all nicely laid out and I can give you some examples. So let's say that you've purchased your CRT1. Well, the next thing you need is an antenna. If at all possible, try to avoid the smallest antennas and at least go for a medium size you just stand more chance of getting your signal heard. Now on the uh, Thunderpole range here, there's uh, quite a few to choose from, but the one that I've actually purchased myself is the Thunderpole Voyager. Now it may not be the uh, cutting edge <laughs> in antennas, but it does work pretty well. And I've got out quite nicely on this. And as you can see, look, it's not all that expensive. If you want to go a little bit more, then also another antenna that gets good reviews is the Thunderpole Red Devil. Either one of these antennas will work so much better than the cheap little springy that you'll get in an eBay. Moving up to a larger antenna, well I think the best ones in the range are the ones from Sirio. They certainly get very, very good reports. 
just have to bear in mind that these are quite tall antennas so these may be not the ones that you want to stick on your car or van and go mobile but if you don't mind parking up somewhere you'll certainly do very well with these and also don't dismiss the old tank whip this is an antenna that's been out donkey's years I own one myself and once again if you park up mobile and you stick this great nine foot antenna on top of your car or van you're going to get out quite well with that just don't probably best not to try and drive down a road with it on now once you've chosen your whip well then you can uh, choose your mount the most popular is a mag mount for cars but if you've got a van or something well, you might want to choose a sort of a gutter mount which is quite easy to sort of fit now if you do go for one of those large antennas such as the Sirio then you might find that you need the tri mag mount base which is a little bit more money so there you go that just gives you an idea of some of the antennas that are available when you go mobile now one important piece of equipment that is often missed from these eBay kits is an SWR meter. Now SWR stands for stand in wave ratio but you don't need to worry about that at this stage of the game. What it is is it's just a meter that allows you to fine tune your antenna to the CB frequency. Now you tune the antenna whilst you're transmitting and thankfully it's quite an easy thing to do. It normally involves a small Allen key you undo a little grub screw and you just move the uh, twig part of your antenna up and down a centimeter or so until you get the reading as low as possible one to one is ideal now as well as tuning your antenna to help get you out further on your transmit it will also protect your radio because you'll notice that on this meter here after three it goes into the red and in fact transmitting while this is in the red can damage your radio now a lot of modern radios will cut out to prevent this and this is where you get the little high coming up in the uh, in the display it's telling you that your SWR is too high so it's really important that you tune in your antenna before you start using your radio now at this stage of the video we've only talked about new equipment but there are plenty of really decent second hand radios that are still available the ones back from the day and you might prefer this they've got nostalgia written all over them and you might like the analog kind of power meter and things like that and if you go onto ebay yeah there's normally quite a few available you know prices vary quite a lot from as i say from that cheap one that i bought earlier on going up to maybe 40 or 50 pounds and on the face of it, yeah, they can look quite nice value. They certainly do have an element of charm. But of course, like anything on eBay, you know, you have to remember that uh, it's buyer beware. The equipment you're looking at is potentially probably 35 years old. But of course, you know, you do have to be careful when it didn't help that CB kind of almost died overnight. So a lot of these radios weren't particularly cared for after that stage. Many were chucked in sheds, chucked in uh, sort of garages. Some were kind of even quite rusty. Others, you know, have had plenty of use during the day and uh, showed quite a few signs of wear. But even if the radio looks quite good, you know, quite often uh, people haven't got power supplies to sort of test them. And you'll see that uh, the item is described well, untested or even only partly working. Now, a lot of this can be attributed to the fact that uh, in the day, well, even now, you had people that liked to fiddle with these radios. You know, these guys were called rig doctors. They would pull the radios apart, always just try and tune the components just to tweak a little bit more power out of the radio or a little bit more receiving. Quite often, they did more harm than good. It's a real kind of minefield out there to know what you're buying. Now, other than eBay, I think it's still a bit of a risk, but, uh, I think it's better to buy off enthusiasts myself so once again if we look on the uh, Charlie Tango forum here you'll see there's something called the marketplace and this is where people buy and sell radios from my own personal experience it's, it's much better to buy a radio from an enthusiast they generally just sort of look after the uh, radio more you know it, it can be tested so you'll know it's working quite often they keep the original box and packaging and things and uh, it's just a better buying experience in my opinion once again you know you'll, you'll find these advertised on places like facebook and sort of twitter and anywhere that people will talk about radios so that very uh, broadly and quickly covers a mobile station but of course what about if you want to set up a radio at home well the good news is you can just take the radio straight out of the car but you can't plug it straight into the mains you need a power supply now for these little small micro radios we're talking here then a 13.8 3 amp version is plenty power enough and you can generally pick these up second hand if you want to save a little bit of money on ebay and, and like unlike radios you know these generally don't go wrong they either work or they don't so it's a much safer buy they still make uh, new power supplies now what i would say when you, if you buy a new power supply think of the uh, the price here a lot of the price is, is actually made up with the postage these things are quite heavy so it might, might cost you a lot more if you buy a slightly powerful one future proof yourself maybe go for a five to seven amp instead of the basic three 
And finally, you know, go back to the CB forums and Facebook pages because quite often people sell really nice secondhand 30 amp power supplies, which actually won't cost you any more than the brand new 5 and 7. And it's good future proofing if you decide to stick with the hobby. Now, to avoid all this extra setup, you can buy home-based CB radios, which has the power supply built in. But, you know, strangely, even back in the day, these, these weren't popular, which I, I do find strange because I quite like them myself. But there was only sort of a few that were available, and quite often they were just a sort of mobile rig that was put into a larger box. You didn't really get any extra features, which I always found strange. But they are available uh, second hand, but just, just be slightly aware that certain models are quite collectible and the bidding is quite strong, so you'll probably be outpriced. But uh, I still like home base stations myself, and as I say, you'll find on, you know, on Facebook people have got some really, really nice ones, and they're certainly something to own. Right, so you're going to need an antenna to use your radio at home. Now, you could just take your uh, car antenna off, but they're quite difficult to set up at home. You, you're going to have to find something with quite sort of a large piece of metal to get your SWR down. So it's much better to buy a dedicated home antenna, and it will work better as well. Now, without hesitation from the beginner, I recommend just a basic half-wave antenna, a silver rod or sort of something like that. And, you know, for 30 quid, you just cannot go wrong with these antennas. They're as old as the hills, but they work surprisingly well. If you've got slightly deeper pockets, the next antenna I'd recommend is an Antron 99. That's my <laughs> antenna of choice currently. And the main advantage of this is it's made out of fiberglass, so unlike the uh, aluminium silver rod, it won't bend in high winds. Another antenna that people swear by is the Serio Game Master. Again, it's been around a long time, but uh, I've seen people getting some really, really good results with this antenna. It is a little bit more expensive, of course. Once you get your antenna, you've got to mount it on something. Now, some people find that scaffold poles are quite cheap to use. And they certainly are, but they are quite heavy. I, I personally use an aluminium pole. It's uh, basically a TV mast, and I find it a lot easier to handle. A three metre length is uh, perfectly ideal and then you've got to sort of attach it somewhere. Now the, probably the best way is to just get yourself some TNK brackets and uh, just put it up on the uh, side of your house so it sticks up above the guttering. If your neighbours won't be too happy or more importantly your missus won't be too happy with that, well don't worry, you know, there's other things you can try. Now I started off with one of these uh, really heavy cast iron umbrella stands. And I found with a lightweight aluminium pole and about three sort of rather heavy bags of sand shoved on the base of it, it was actually quite stable and I had this up for about two years. I mounted both my half-wave silver rod and my Antron 99 on this system and although it wasn't as high as if it was on the roof, I got out really well. I got out all over Europe, Africa and also to America on this system so it does work and it's, it's, it's not a bad compromise if you're just starting out. Now there's an old radio saying saying that height is might and unfortunately that is true so if, if at all possible try and get the antenna as high as you can preferably up on the uh, up on the side of the house and above the roof line so i, I hope that helps you um just get started that's sort of my recommendation whether you decide to go mobile or home base i mean the decision's up to you is you know you've got advantages either way if, if, if you go mobile um, then basically you know you can drive the car anywhere so if there's no action around your sort of local home you can drive up to a sort of a high place and park up and uh, you might sort of you know get some more contacts but of course you know it's quite nice to uh, to be home base because obviously you've got you know you've got more sort of comfort and that along the lines but either way um, with those radios that I showed you there certainly the CRT1 radio there um, you can get sort of set up uh, you should be able to do that for less than uh, less than a hundred pounds so uh, yeah there you go so I think you know mo moving on from that um, I, I won't go fully into it on this video because it'll be obviously another video um, but if you want to you know you want to get a sort of a uh, spend a bit more money uh, on a radio and still say legal stay within the regulations um, laid down by Ofcom then um, I, th I think as I've mentioned before you've got the uh, the Cobra 29 uh, LX EU uh, for well, for the UK uh, market. Um, now, this, say, it's a very nice radio. Um, comes in just over the £100 mark. I think it's about 115 something sort of like that. Um, with this one, you've got, uh, you've got AM and FM, but also you can change it on to the EU band. So you've got Poland, Italy, France, um, Germany. You know, I wouldn't say there's a great deal of action on the EU bands. Um, they normally, uh, they're normally on AM. And uh, unfortunately, we do suffer quite a lot of local interference on the AM band, uh, you know, in this country. Uh, certainly, if you live in a town, for example, you can pick up quite a bit of interference. But as I say, you know, for the money, 
um, I think that's a fairly uh, a fairly decent decent radio. Probably it probably receives better on AM than it does uh, on FM because it was a, basically an American radio, which was an FM AM radio, which was uh, converted. Ah, the next terrific. one I'd recommend is the good old Grant Two. Um, this really does open the door to radio communications. It's probably an idea, maybe to you know if if you've um, had the little CRT one for a while and you found some local contacts uh, on the FM band. Then uh, move up to the the Grant Two again, a perfectly legal, legal UK radio, and this opens up sideband, upper and uh, lower sidebands, which gives you a chance to, if the conditions are right, to do some DXing, which is talking to uh, radio stations pretty much all around the world. And it is possible when the conditions are right that you can go pretty much all the way around the world on this radio, certainly. Uh, across to uh, Europe. So that's another radio. That's, that's, this is more expensive. Um, these generally are going for around about the sort of £230 mark. So we are ramping up the price a little bit. But a uh, very easy radio to use and uh, certainly a very nice uh, very nice radio. Um, if you've got the money, you know, if you can afford it and you want to start with this radio, well, this covers uh, most of the sort of bands that you ever really um, sort of get to need. Um, so there we go, I hope this uh, video has been of some interest to you, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe, I'll be putting up uh, more radio videos uh, in the future, and uh, yeah, that's about it, so thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you all on the next one.